Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, what? No way. I pressed the wrong button. Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today I'm gonna be doing my Christian Dvorak Montreal Canadiens rebuild in NHL 21. Now the Habs have traded for Christian Dvorak and it is a huge trade for the future of Montreal. So I decided it's a great excuse to make another NHL 21 video, go through franchise mode, go through eight different seasons at the very least, and then see if I can win the Stanley Cup with Montreal and with this current young core. Now my plan is to retool for the first couple of years, then start competing in year three, year four, and see how it works out, but technically a rebuild of the Montreal Canadiens with the young core of Nick Suzuki, uh, Christian Dvorak, Cole Caulfield, and Alexander Romanov. Hopefully building a dynasty in Montreal and bringing them some big time cup success. So if you guys are excited for this NHL 21 franchise mode, make sure you stick right to the very end because I, ha I have a feeling that some big things are going to go down. And hit that subscribe button if you are new. 60% of the people that are watching are not subscribed. If you like hockey, this channel is the place to be. And we are officially inside the franchise mode for the Montreal Canadiens. And as you can see, I already got Christian Dvorak loaded up and ready to go. Now, again, the game plan when it comes to this rebuild is that we're going to be really not tanking, but we're going to be rebuilding kind of in these next couple of years, in the 2021, 2022, maybe even 2023 drafts. But once we get to 2024, 2025, that is when we're really going to start competing and hopefully winning consistent Stanley Cups with the Montreal Canadiens. Now, I obviously have Christian Dvorak here, so I've already changed quite a bit about the Montreal Canadiens roster and this is how it's looking like right now I have Jonathan Drouin, Suzuki and Caulfield as the first line Hoffman, Dvorak and Toffoli on the right. I then have on the third line Josh Anderson, Cedric Paquette and Brendan Gallagher and on the fourth Matthew Perot, uh, Jake Evans and then Jake Armia. As for the defense there's some pretty good talent there still even with Shea Weber gone. You got Brett Kulak, Jeff Petrie, Ben Sherrod, David Savard then Joel Edmondson and then Alexander Romanov Romanov is a top four medium um, from what uh, EA had him as. And then we go on to the goaltending where Carey Price is still a 91 and then Jake Allen is a 92. And in terms of the scratches, I got Byron, Uliets, and then Lekkinen as the extras. But again, when it comes to this team, I don't think initially we're going to suck. And in terms of the gr uh, actual ground rules for this franchise, I'm going to limit myself to this Montreal team at least to five trades per year. So that includes the whole season plus the draft plus free agency. Because I don't want to have this be a super unrealistic thing where I just completely go off the rails and trade everybody in year one nah that's not what's gonna happen we're gonna retool a little bit slowly but we're gonna make it work and we're going to bring the dynasty back to montreal back to the days where it was amazing for the habs it'll be back we'll be making it happen and we'll be starting in this whole video we're gonna be going through the entire thing at least five to eight years that's what i'm planning on doing but again we're gonna be doing as much as humanly possible and trying to build this team into something amazing but without further ado, let's get straight into the season start for 2020. I'll update you guys at the All-Star break, see where we're at, and see how we're doing. All right, so we are here at the NHL trade deadline, not the All-Star break, but the NHL trade deadline because this team is pretty weird. It's a 31-27-4 and record. I know you can't see it on the actual screen itself, but we're right in the middle of the pack in the standings, right behind pretty much everybody. 66 points on the season right now, and we're three points behind a playoff spot. It's fair to say that we're going to be a selling team. Uh, Toffoli is the leading scorer so far, but yeah, this, this team just doesn't have what it takes. There's been so much inconsistency back and forth they've lost games like 11 to 2 and then have won games like 10 to 1 so it's been a really wacky season so far for this team but uh, the one revelation that's happened so far which has been pretty exciting has been Cole Caulfield's development he has turned into an 88 overall and he's a high elite so it's not too surprising but he has been absolutely tearing it up 53 points in 61 games played I mean I can go look right now but I'm pretty sure he's He's high up there in the in the Calder race right now. But in terms of rookie skaters, the leading score is whoa man. I make I make Caprice up pretty good in this game, but 69 nice points in 61 games is a lot. All right, so now we are entering the NHL trade deadline, and once again we are going to be sellers, and we have quite a few players available. Jet Petrie is among the best in the NHL right now, but Jet Petrie is the main guy that we're really looking to trade, even though he does have the extension still in this game. We'll see what we can get for Jeff Petrie to finding a trade here. Ooh! Two first-round picks from the Minnesota Wild. One from Minnesota and one from Pittsburgh. What are the other one? What's the other one? Ooh. Ooh. Okay. 
this is okay wait a wait just a second this is interesting so we got two offers here one from the minnesota wild and one from the ottawa Senators. so let's uh let, let's let's test the waters on this uh on this ottawa package shall we uh so let's just check out firstly um jack kapaka who's uh a, a, a 22 year old 75 overall top six forward medium not too bad could be a nice role player for us but two first round picks now ottawa is a, a very good 36 20 and 6 dang minnesota as of right now are 28 31 and 4 that is a lot more enticing of an offer i must say that is interesting but i i have to accept this offer this is way too good a, a, a potential lottery pick for sure plus another first round pick on top and it's, he's also going to the Western Conference. I'm going to say yes to this trade. Our biggest trade of the rebuild so far. Jeff Petrie is off to the Minnesota Wild. Whoa! Whoa! The, the Flyers just coming out with just a bomb right here offering us a trade. They have they have, they have have proposed Tyler Toffoli and Perot for a first round pick in 2022. Zade Wisdom and LeBierge. Now, I made Wisdom pretty good in this game because I think he will be pretty good. Uh, but that's a first round pick in 2022. And uh, Zade Wisdom. That is interesting. That is interesting. Now, Zay Wisdom's a, a, a 71 overall 18-year-old, um, which I think, again, could be really, really good for us. Really, really good for us. Uh, but you're getting rid of to fully, which would suck, and Perot. But here's the thing that I'm kind of looking at. This could be almost two first-round picks in terms of value. Get Zay Wisdom and a first. So you know what? To help the rebuild, we're going to make it happen. We're going to trade to Foley, and that'll be our last big trade of this deadline. Okay, I lied. One last trade we made was we were trading Jake Allen to the Arizona Coyotes for a random goalie and a fourth round pick. So I made that trade just so we can have Caden Primu at the backup spot officially and to end the season that way. Um... <laughs> uh, just coming out of nowhere, Boston, trying to get me to do something here. Florida! Frig off, okay? Stop. I'm in the negotiations. Oh my gosh. Did it, did it really erase that offer? Okay, you know what? It, me it means it wasn't meant to be. All right, so we have officially ended the 2021 season. We just missed the playoffs. It was a little bit of a scare at the very end, but we missed by two points. The Red Wings, Sens, Panthers, Bruins, and Lightning made the playoffs, but the Canadians, Leafs, and Sabres and a missing. Nick Suzuki had a tear in the second half, and that was a big reason why we we're even close. He ended up getting 84 points in 82 games played. And just to wrap up all the point scores on, uh, on the team for 2021, Suzuki got 84 points. Uh, a breakout year. Caulfield got 78 points in 81 games. Hoffman got 78 points. Gallagher got 63 points. Dvorak got 63 points. He started up a little bit slow, but ended up getting a really solid season. So hopefully that happens in real life. Penguins, they probably made the playoffs, right? <gasps> okay, the Wild missed the playoffs. Oh my goodness, what? No way. I thought the Penguins were the team that would be in the playoffs. So for Jeff Petrie, we got like, what is that? We got two top eight picks potentially in this draft? That is insane. How, why did the Wild do that? Oh my goodness. I knew the Wild were probably going to miss the playoffs, but I thought the Penguins were much better. They collapsed. Oh my goodness. So the Penguins have the best, oh, we, we have the Penguins picks. We have the fourth best odds. We also have the eighth best odds. And we also have our own uh, pick, which is not too bad as well. Not going to be amazing, but it still could be a lottery pick. So we have three potential chances of getting inside the, th the top three. And honestly, two really good chances. So let's sim to the draft and sim to the lottery result. Oh. So we dropped down two spots with the Pittsburgh pick, and we dropped down one spot with the Minnesota Wild pick, and we had the 15th overall pick. So we have 6th, we have 8th, and we have 15th. That sucks, man. So Calgary was the worst team, and they stick at number 1. Now, in terms of the actual picks we could end up getting, there's still a lot of talent. I mean, the 6th-ranked player is, 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 is Kent Johnson, who I will take on this team 110%. I had him in the WHL, and he just exploded. I'm really going to target forwards, especially to start out. And Clark goes 4th overall to the Devils. Very interesting pick. So they skip on Luke Hughes. Interesting. And then the Coyotes pick Kent Johnson. We had to pick Luke Hughes. 
There is no other option here. We have to pick Luke Hughes. I'm pretty sure I made him a medium elite. So you know what? Even though I said we were going to go for forwards, we're going to go for defensemen here. Luke Hughes, welcome to the to the Montreal Canadiens. High elite defenseman dropping to the sixth overall pick. Welcome to the Montreal Canadiens. Beautiful pick there by yours truly. Buffalo ends up selecting Mason McTavish, seventh overall. That kind of puts a little bit of a wrinkle in my plans because I would have loved to have him. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Kim Bickland is a medium elite. Apparently is a gem. 17 years old from the Liga. I think we have to go for the value, right? I, especially when it's a creative player, it kind of makes it a little more enticing. Kim Vickland, absolutely powerful name right there. You know what? We're going to go for another defenseman. Why not? We might as well go for as much value as possible. We're going to go for Kim Vickland from the Liga, the gem of the draft. At number eight, 74 overall medium elite. Holy goodness gracious. All right, so this is kind of the framework framework of what I'm working with here. I'm going to send the 15th overall pick in Yolarmia to the Preds for the 11th overall pick. I'm going to see if this goes through. We'll see. And it does. Okay, so Armia and the 15th overall pick for the 11th overall pick from the Preds. I'm going to go for Dylan Gunther just because I think he fits us really, really well. So we're going to go Dylan Gunther with the, ten, with the 11th overall pick. And he's a medium elite 68 overall sniper. You absolutely love to see it. Man, this draft is doing just worlds for us right now. Hughes... Vickland and now Dylan Gunther setting us up truly for a great future. So next up with the 46th overall pick, I'm going to go with Jeffrey Versteeg, an offensive defenseman from the U.S. Development Program. That's going to be our pick here. We'll see what his overall is. He's 5'8". 69 overall. That is nice. I'm going to go with Taro Koivu from the Liga. Uh, low top six. All right, so that is our 2021 NHL draft. Luke Hughes, 6, Vicklin, 8th, Gunther, 11th, Versteeg, 46, Koivu, 47, Chen, 48, or 41. And then I got a random guy named Slater. Overall, very solid draft. And again, our potential now and our rebuild for the future is just looking so much stronger. All right, y'all. So we are now into free agency and... Uh, I think it's about time we trade Carey Price. At this rate, Carey Price is going to be basically at the bottom of his value once we're finally starting to compete. And I found a pretty interesting trade partner in the LA Kings. Now, they aren't like like exceedingly happy to get rid of Sebastian Kosa, but he's a 58 overall, obviously selected in this past draft in the second second round, 43rd overall, obviously a beast in real life. But from what I've done in this sim as well, or in, with this with this roster in the past, I've done a couple of franchise modes, Sebastian Kosa always becomes good even though he may be 58 overall right now he just becomes a beast in no times and again for trading carry price to get a guy like kosa back would be a huge great replacement big and there you go so he gets kosa a second and a third round pick from the la kings now the main guy that i'm looking at right now is alex nadalkovic who is a ufa in this class as well 25 years old he fits our game plan in terms of the years wanted he wants five we'll, we'll get him to round three but I think 5.5 5, 5 could really work for Nadelkovic as well in, in Montreal. Now, another thing we need is forward depth, and especially at C, we're kind of barren. So you know what? Let's go after Ryan Getzlav, formerly of the Anaheim Ducks, and get him on a deal. 4.5 for one year. Oh, the fam, thank you so much for subscribing <laughs> while I'm recording this. Appreciate it. War Fogel is a very interesting one. I think he could work out pretty well here. I'm going to give him a $2.2 .2 million contract for one year. I think on a third line for us, he could work pretty well and it'd be a big part of the forward group for next year and could potentially be a trade deadline guy as well. All right, so we're now getting into the team for 2021. And for some reason, EA wanted to make Paul Byron the captain. Uh, I'm not going to have that happen. <laughs> Sorry. And for the Lions for year two, we'll see how our guys progressed. And uh, here's how it's looking. So EA has Hoffman, Suzuki, who's up to an 88, by the way, and Caulfield, who's up to a 90 overall. Absolutely amazing. Then the second line of Druan, Dvorak, and Gallagher. The third line of Getzlav, Fogel, and Anderson. And then a fourth line of Byron, Evans, and Lekkonen. In terms of defense, we got Kulak, Savard, Romanov, who's up to an 81, Sherratt, Edmondson, and Kel Fleury, who's coming into the lineup as a 79 overall. He made a pretty good jump. Uh, in terms of the extras, we have Paling as well on the roster, potentially. And in terms of the goaltending, Alex Nedeljkovic and Kaden Primo, who's up to an 82, so not a bad roster, and we'll see how we do by season's end.
All right, so we are here for the NHL trade deadline, and the problem is that we're really, really good. Well, not really, really good. We're right in the playoff spots right now. I think we're like 31, 19, and 2, something like that. Had a fantastic... So far, Cole Coffey and Suzuki have been absolutely tearing it up. Now, when it comes to the actual trade deadline itself, the one guy that I'm really planning on trading really is... is is David Savard. The Preds giving us a first and a third. Okay, fine. First and a third. I'm going to just do whatever, 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 what you just offer me, okay? Okay, there we go. So we have now traded David Savard for a first and a third. 39, 21, and two. You're also giving us a third round pick. You know what? He's also going to the West. We'll get, get Slav to the Jets. Hopefully, he'll be able to win the cup there. So that'll be our next trade, but we do get a second for this year, which is very, very important. All right, so we need to make a much needed update here because right now we are one point out of a playoff spot with one game to go. We'll see if we get a win here and potentially making the playoffs. Uh, for the first period, the Islanders get the lead. Matthew Barzell, the power play goal on the Delkovich, and that'll start the game. And then we tie it up. Mike Kaufman gets a clutch goal to give us the tie. We'll see what happens in this third. Warren Fogle gives us a fighting chance right now. Now, seven minutes to go with a one goal lead. Will the Canadians be able to keep it and keep themselves in the playoff race? And we will. A 2-1 win might come in the game-winning goal. We'll see if that is enough to make the playoffs. We'll see if that's enough. It might not be. And it isn't. Crap. The Leafs just make it. Just make it. I mean, what? how, how close was that? How close was that? So the Leafs ended up with 93 points. We ended up with 92. We were one point out of a playoff spot. Still a lot to be proud of. Super close to the playoffs once again. And in terms of the season-ending statistics, I mean, Cole Caulfield and Suzuki were way over a point per game at uh, the starts. Kind of cooled off a little bit, but Caulfield ended up with 80 points in the year, 82 games played. Chris Novorak, a huge season, 75 points, 22 goals, 53 assists. Unbelievable. Mike Hoffman, 70 points, and you can just go down the list. Suzuki didn't play the full season, but was honestly a little bit disappointing offensively. Uh, but again, you can see it. Romanov with a great year, 41 points in 82 games. Games played as a big standout uh, in terms of the goalies I'm pretty sure Nadelkovic did, um, oh crap Nadelkovic didn't do too well an 898 save percentage in 65 games played Primo did pretty well though with a 903 in 25 games uh, let's go to skaters and just look at the see at the um, whole NHL and uh, see what's going on just to end off 2022 before we get into the NHL draft but again we have a lot to look forward to there we'll see what happens what Andre Pilat at 31 years old gets 117 points for the Art Ross. Jacob Voracek on the Blue Jackets getting up, dude. <laughs> EA once you get into the once you get past year one, it starts to get whacked. And now we'll move on to the NHL draft and hopefully some great luck in the uh, draft lottery too. Let's check where the Flyers were in the standings, just because they might have a role to play. The uh, Stanley Cup final is the Rangers versus the Oilers. That is amazing. Uh, but let's go on to the uh, Flyers, see where they were at in the standings. Last time I checked, they were kind of like in the playoff race, kind of like us, but uh, we're kind of out of it. So the Metro... And the Flyers missed! Okay, the Flyers missed. We have two lottery picks here. We'll see what happens. And the Rangers are the Stanley Cup champions. Very interesting. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me, man? Columbus moving up from 11 to 1. Why couldn't it have been us, man? All right, so we have officially entered the NHL draft. It is time to get into this. Hopefully, there will be a team that wants to trade. Okay, let's trade. Let's trade two thirds. Let's trade two thirds. Let's make this work. Let's make this happen. Come on. And there we go. Okay, so we trade a bunch of, we trade a couple of seconds, a couple of thirds, and our 15th overall pick, I believe right okay no the 12th overall pick at number three the capitals get matthew savoy high elite that's a pretty good pick for them and the blues will end up going for Sally monson high elite defenseman okay so we have a choice between three power forward defensemen now first things first Rolov is uh the best available according to uh central scouting he was great in his league a season though 26 goals 19 assists and 59 games played turk up playing the khl getting 22 points in his draft year that's pretty great and then Jilson also played in the SHL. 
You know what? I think we're going to go for the Norwegian. Kurt Roloff. What a name. But you know what? We want to see where Norwegian succeed. As a power forward, he's going to be so good on this team. Doesn't even take that many penalty minutes for a power forward either. So he's pretty disciplined. But that great goal scoring ability is definitely what we're betting on. Six foot three. Norwegian stud. Kurt Roloff. Welcome to the squad. Fifth overall by the Montreal Canadiens. 83 overall. No way. Oh my goodness. 83 overall. Kurt roll off you know what do we trade for the king's pick too I'll, I'll 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 see if i can make it work guys i'll see if i can make it work let's trade this whole entire haul for this six overall pick it's gotta work and it does six overall pick to the montreal canadians so you know what ruslan turakov welcome to the squad and he is 82 overall. So both Roloff and Turkov are going to be on the NHL squad next year. We've done a ton of building. Uh, we have trading for guys like Kosa. We have drafting defensemen. And now uh, we have kind of the blueprints in, in terms of everything. We have, our, we have our franchise goalie coming up. We have our franchise defensemen, guys like Luke Hughes and, and Vicklin coming up. And now we have our forward group really set in stone. Guys like Suzuki, Caulfield, and now guys like Roloff and, and, and Ruslan. It's going to be really, really good for the future. And on top of a great prospect pool, we've already added so much talent on top of it all right so the big free agents that we have to lock up is nick suzuki and thankfully he wants an eight-year deal which for an 88 overall at 8.15 million i think this would be an absolute steal if we can get nick suzuki locked up this is really our huge signing if we can get nick suzuki locked down the caulfield's next but uh, suzuki's the big one and he was the big free agent so we'll see if we can get him locked up that is going to be a huge contract if we can get it done so the good news is that we pretty much got everybody that we wanted to get signed locked up. And Nick Suzuki did end up signing the eight-year, $8.1 million offer, which I think if that happens in real life, honestly, could be a very, very good deal. The other big one as well is Romanov, who also wants to go a little bit longer term, which I'm kind of all right with. Um, honestly, getting him done at 5.5 at would be magical. I'm going to send him to kind of the same term as Kulak. If I can get him at 5.2 for eight years, I'd be pretty happy about that. Probably not going to be more than like an 84 or 85, but just getting him locked up so we don't have to worry about him anymore i think is definitely worth it i was trying to find a trade for brennan gallagher and in real life as lindell is not that great but in this game he's an 84 and i feel like bringing him onto the team could be a really big boost to that defense and brennan gallagher's guy yes is our captain but also is expendable and we do get a defense when we need back we also get a third rounder and a fourth round pick in 2024 to me this is a trade that makes sense for both sides for dallas as well they need a little bit of, of, of forward help and uh to, to me i think s lindell could be our best defenseman next year again in game and could be a really big addition for the montreal Canadiens. so i'm gonna make this trade and that'll be the big one i think of this offseason now i'm gonna go for one more defense on the market and i think i'm gonna target colin miller good overall puck moving in this game good overall skating and we do need a little bit more of, of that punch in the lineup i'm gonna offer him a 2.8 million dollar offer i'm gonna give him one year because i don't want to risk it too much i'm gonna go up to three million for one year but besides that i think we could go for another centerman but i think a guy that kind of fits our style in terms of what we need right now would be more of a playmaker and i think ivan barbashev is probably the best option had a really good offensive year last year 14 goals 22 assists and uh, apparently it doesn't really cost that much uh, I'll give him about two years, 2.5. Dude, Edmonton's just trying to rob me. A second and a third for wisdom, not happening. Bye-bye. All right, so now we are officially inside year three, and this is how EA has our lines, and I can already tell I'm going to be making some changes here real quick because the because the line of legends here, Turakov, Dvorak, and Rolov needs to happen. But for year three, we have Warren Fogle as a third, as the first line left wing. Nick Suzuki at 89 overall. Cole Caulfield raising up one to 91. Then we, have, of course, have Ruslan Turakov on the left wing, our Russian power forward, centered by Christian Dvorak and our boy kurt roloff norwegian power forward on the third line mike kaufman ivan barbashev and josh anderson on the fourth Juan zade wisdom bumping up to an 81 at age 20 definitely gonna be a great player on that fourth line and then our turi lekin honestly this four group is pretty fantastic and looking really good for year three then we go on to the defense we have eslin dell with alexander romanov brett kulak with colin miller and then yol edmondson with kale flurry this is also much much better than what we were working with in year two a lot 
lot to look forward to there. And then, of course, with the golds, and we have Nadelkovic and Kaden Primu. Sadly, Primu hasn't really bumped up any overall, but still a decent tandem. And again, in terms of the actual team itself, a lot of talent here. And honestly, I think mean, now is the year that we finally start to go for it for the NHL playoffs. We'll see what happens, but I think this is a realistic team. And again, hopefully for Montreal, we're able to make the playoffs. Now, the, good, the good news is that Ben Schrott still has quite a bit of value, but we just don't have any room left for him at this point. I'm going to find a trade, and then I'll tell you guys about it, basically. All right, you know what? I said I wouldn't do it, but I'm trading Ben Schrott to Tampa. We'll get a sixth. Fine, okay? Fine. If this is what you want, it's fine. We'll make it work. Anyways, I'll see ya when there's something that happens. All right, so St. Louis has offered me something very interesting. They're willing to part ways with Colton Pareko, who is an 85 overall in this game, and doesn't put up the greatest numbers, to be fair, but still an 85 and a defensive defenseman, and uh, Norlander a third, and Colin Miller the way back. Now, uh, they offered me something a little bit different. I put on Miller just so I can give some flexibility to my uh, defense. Okay! So we have added, we have added Colton Pareko. Now, Norlander, I doesn't have a great overall in this game. So he was a 65 at 22 years old. Probably not going to work out for us. But bringing in Colton Pareko is really, really interesting. So we have now Colton Pareko on the defense. And that solves a little bit of the top end defensive issues for us. We are third in the Atlantic to end off year three. Nick Suzuki ending off as well with 72 assists, 85 points. Uh, it was pretty good with Nick Suzuki riding right the way. He had a disappointing 2022, but bounced out, bounced up in a big way in 2023. Cole Caulfield, 39 goals, 77 points. Christian Dvorak, a point per game, just continues to get better and better year after year. Ruslan Turakov with 64 points, 36 goals in 82 games played. What a year for the Russian rookie. We also have Kurt Roloff right behind him. A much more balanced score sheet with 27 goals, 29 assists in 56 games or 56 points in 82 games then you got Fogel, Barbashev, Hoffman, Anderson and I'll just have the rest go down Luke Hughes with 25 points by the way uh, Vicklin with 23 in terms of rookie skaters Ruslan Turakov beats out Brad Lamberts and he I hope will win the Calder Trophy Turakov our Russian sensation 64 points there we go the Buffalo Sabres won the President's Trophy wait just a second I, I want to I want to see here I want to see what did the Buffalo Sabres like actually look like? Because we're only two years ahead. This is year three of this franchise mode. How did the Buffalo Sabres turn it around that fast? All right, so Buffalo. Let's see what do they got. They got all. They kept Eichel, uh, Olafson, Eichel, Jeff Skinner, eighty-three. Dude, EA is so funny. <laughs> Johnny Goudreau. They got Johnny Goudreau. They got Rupe Hints. They got Yanni Gord. Cousins did pretty well. They got Paul Snassy, Chris Kreider. Uh, Darlene's done well. Colin Blackwell got 45 points for them. Bobby Ryan. But we can now move on to our series against the Florida Panthers. The first series playoff-wise on this franchise mode. I'm so, so excited. And we will be facing off against the, the President's Trophy winning Buffalo Sabres. They get it done against the Ottawa Sanders. And the Sabres will be who we match up against. A scary matchup, and I never thought I'd say that. But we'll see what happens. It's Buffalo. It's Buffalo. We need to get this. It's, a, it's the Buffalo Sabres. Okay, you Habs? Everybody, just know it's the Buffalo Sabres. Okay? We're going to start off game one here in buffalo and you know what i have full confidence i have full confidence we're going to win this series we are going to win this series and it's going to be absolutely beautiful no doubt in my mind all right first period three to zero halves come on okay second period three to zero halves come on okay uh third period three to one halves three to two halves three to two Four to three Habs. Turakov, he comes in. Five to four Habs. Come on, power play, please, please. We got scored on by Patrick Nemeth. Uh, game two. Uh, I'm expecting a three to zero first period. I should really stop talking. <laughs> oh, but the house come right back. Dvorak and Luke Hughes get on the board. Okay, one period to go, Montreal. Come, don't, don't, don't. 
Yes, yes, do, 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 please, do! No, don't, don't, don't! Just get our man! Why? But Vicklin gets us back within one. Come on, five minutes to go. Bring some of that magic you had in against the Panthers. Bring it! It's the Sabres! And we're down 0-2. I'm going to sim this second period. If this is if it is not a Habs lead right now, I'm going to die. <sighs> Why? Okay. One period. This is it. This is it. If you want to win a game in year three, Habs, this is it. Power play. You bums. You bums. Somebody. Somebody. Please. Five on. We had two power... We're not scoring. No, it's not happening. We had two power plays, and they're scoring on this power play. No, they don't. But Montreal, please! Something! We are about to get swept by the Buffalo Sabres. You bums. You bozos. You frauds. You clowns. You, 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 I pressed the wrong button! <laughs> we got swept by the... I've been here for three hours recording this, man. We've got swept by the Buffalo Sabres. Okay, guys. I had to fully cleanse myself from that playoff defeat by taking a shower and just getting refueled for this uh, year four because this is really where we start to get into the important seasons year four and year five is where we really want to be winning stanley cups not losing in round two we will be going on to year four hopefully very very soon okay just pointing out that the stanley cup final is the buffalo sabers versus the st louis blues this would <laughs> imagine showing the stanley cup final to a person like five years ago before the st louis actually won and the Sabres have a 2 0 lead, too. So, uh, let's. Ch I guess we could be losing against the future Stanley Cup champions. And the Buffalo Sabres are your Stanley Cup champions. Not only did they win the Presence Trophy, they have won the Stanley Cup in 2023. So, some good news for Sabres fans. All right, so we are now entering the NHL draft for 2023. This is probably going to be the last draft that we fully focus on, unless there's like a big guy that we really want to target later on in some different drafts. But there is two franchise players, Connor Bedard and Drew Dumba, the Norwegian centerman. All right, so as you could probably expect, to the Carolina Hurricanes is Connor Bedard, to the Sharks is Drew Dumba, then you got Jaeger to the Devils, Osborne to the Coyotes, Wise to the Kings, McBride to the Islanders, and then that is it for the medium elite. So there was two top six, and Heinrich went to the uh, Flyers. So yeah, I don't think we're going to use this pick. Okay, you know what? We're going to try to make this happen. Oh, I, it might not be the most realistic thing in the world, but Jacob Chikrin is just too good. A 90 overall, 4.6 million for the next three years. That is an absolute steal of a contract. Arizona. I, Arizona. Oh, we got him. We got him. Welcome to Montreal, Jacob Chikrin. That is the that is the that is the big piece that we needed. That is the big piece that we needed. We have now brought on Christian Dvorak and now we have brought on Jacob Chikrin. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That is exactly what we needed on our defense. We needed that number one defense, but Chikrin is amazing. You look at him. Look at him in the Montreal Canadiens. Oh, that is beautiful. And, and don't look at that plus minus he was on arizona he got 40 points the last year on an arizona team so we are looking quite good right now he's going to be giving us major number one minutes that is just beautiful guys and the thing is i mean looking at what we need right now jacob chicken was truly the final piece i i think we might be able to go for another guy but that's that's really the big move of this offseason that puts this year four in a lot better of a position to win all right so cole caulfield is the big free agent for us this year he wants 9.6 six million on a not on an eight-year 
deal. I want to get him locked up as soon as humanly possible. Now, he does want to sign, so I'm going to offer him $9 million. All right, so Cole Caulfield rejected that offer. He said that he just squarely wanted it in seven years. We're going to give him a little bit of a decrease, 8.85 for seven years. Let's see if he ends up accepting this, because again, I'll take seven years. I'm, I'll still be okay with it. I'll be fine. Um, and I don't care about you. I don't care about you. And there we go. Cole Caulfield here for the next seven seasons. Going to be a UFA at 29, but we'll be fine. We're trying to compete right now. Cole Caulfield gives us just that. And the trade that I have locked myself into are actually, let me see, because we do have a couple of teams that are willing to give us um, some pretty high picks. I'm going to go with the Vegas' offer here. I know it's, it's a 2025 third rounder, but we're sending him to the Western Conference, which I think is a big thing, and we'll get the full contract off. So Vegas is going to go with a third in 2025 and a seventh in 2025. I, I, obviously, the Washington offer is better, but I don't want to send him to the East. We're going to send him to Vegas, get him there with Max Patch already, but Josh Anderson is officially off the team. So we're going to send Hoffman as well to the uh, West, and we're going to get three picks, or uh, three our two third round picks from the national predators hoffman is now off the books and again we'll now have 17 million now to work with in free agency to make some even bigger upgrades okay um alex ovechkin is available <laughs> alex ovechkin is available and we could really use a first line left wing i'm just saying you know what? We're bringing Alex Ovechkin onto the team. It's a one-year deal. Let's sign him. Let's get him. Let's get him done for nine point eight for the grade eights. Nine point eight. Montreal. Let's get Alex Ovechkin. It is going to happen. We're going to offer him a contract. We'll see what happens. That's going to be really the big offer of this free agency. All right. So another trade that I've kind of realized I've, I have I kind of need to make is Brett Kulak. In terms of our defenseman, he's the seventh best in terms of overall. I thought that Kulak would be a big part of this team for a long time. Obviously signing from him for eight years. But I did not expect the growth of guys like Hughes and Vicklin to be as fast as it was. And uh, Kulak is just kind of on his way out. We're going to send him to the West as well. Chicago is going to give us uh, two third round picks. Now, I did also realize we do need to get some more forward depth. We don't have quite enough guys. So one guy I'm going to go really after is Ross Colton. I'm going to give him a $4.3 million contract for a year. Uh, Anders Bjork, who was great against us. You know what? Anders Bjork kind of, kind of fits that fourth line mold. He does want to be a fourth line or two. So let's give him a $3.2 million contract for a year. And that'll be pretty much the big signings, hopefully, that we end up making. Okay, now it is time. What will EA give us for our fourth year? For our fourth season lines? Okay, I'm excited. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Alex Ovechkin, Nick Suzuki, and Cole Caulfield. Show any Habs fan that line right now, and they will be absolutely giddy. I guarantee it. But that is going to be insane for us this year. That is crazy. Uh, Barbashev's not the second line center. Stop that. But we got Turkov, uh, Turkov and Roloff up to 87 overall. Absolutely amazing on the defense. We got Jacob, Chikorin, and Colton for... Oh, my goodness. Look at the jumps of Vicklin and Hughes. Abs uh, you know what? Did we put Hughes on the far? Yes, baby. That is what you love to see. Chikorin and Luke Hughes. Kim Vickland and Colton Bareko, and then Esselin Dell and Alexander Romanov. That is a stacked decor, man. And, and Chikorin just gives us that extra edge. Oh, I just wanted to show you guys one last thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is pretty much it. Oh, yeah, while I'm here, I might as well give an idea of what Ruslan Turakov, Rolov, and even Vickland look like. Ruslan Turakov actually kind of looks like a real person. It's really weird. Like, he actually looks like a Russian. Good job, EA. Honestly, I'm surprised. Now, I said uh, Ruzan looked like a real person. Then we go on to uh, <laughs> my boy Kurt Roloff, the Norwegian stud, looking like an absolute jest stud. Look at this, man. All right, so combining just a rough second half with injuries, we did not end up as the best team in the league, but we still finished with 103 points. Not as many wins as last year, unfortunately, but still, we made the playoffs second in the Atlantic Division. Uh, Nick Suzuki was our leading scorer for the season, playing all 82 games, getting 95 points, 81 assists, almost an assist per game, which is um, unbelievable. We are going to be the home team against the Ottawa Senators. This is going to be a heck of of a series let's check out the Ottawa Senators because I, I haven't really seen their roster uh in in this sim too much so let's check out their roster what they're working with here so Ottawa where are you where are you Ottawa Senators Colin
what so game one in montreal we need to win this game we need to win this game we got off to a great start against the florida panthers we need to win this game okay period one and we are having the lead to start off. Alex Ovechkin on the power play. And Kurt Roloff getting on the board too. Ridley Greig gets one back late in the first. For the second period, the halves just continue it. Alex Ovechkin and Jane Struble get on the board. We'll see what happens in this third. Hopefully, we'll be able to shut down the door. The shots are pretty even uh, between us two. We'll see what happens here in Montreal though. Still 4-1 of 10 to go. Come on, Montreal. Come on, Nadelkovich. You can do it, baby. You can do it, Alex. And bringing it home is Alex Ovechkin with another goal. And Luke Hughes getting on the board. Just making it pile on, baby. Josh Norris gets one late, though, to give the, the sense some momentum going on a game two. But your Habs win game one, six to two. Why is there somebody mowing the lawn right outside? Okay, anyways, let's go on to game two between the Ottawa Senators. We need to start off with a bang here in the first period. Come on, Habs. And the Sens get some momentum going. Alex Vermenton on Adelkovic. Very early on in the first. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Come on, boys. 1-0. Power play for the Sens. They can't score. The Habs have 30 shots. Are you going to get shut out by Matt Murray? Oh, my goodness. Ben Carrillo, the Norwegian... Colin Way is an 83 overall. Frig off, man. Like, dude, we need to think about this for a second, though. Like, why? Colin White. Colin. Anyway, anyways, on to, on to game three. I. If you guys can respond well, then we'll be okay. There we go, Karolov with three goals so far in this series. Coming through again on the power play. You love to see it. Kurt coming through. All right, period two. Keep it going. And there we go, Christian Dvorak with a big goal. That's how we do it, baby. That's the Christian Dvorak rebuild coming through. Power play for the house, five on three, and they can't score on it. The Sens are still alive. Ten minutes to go in the third. Right down to the wire. Shots are almost tied. The Habs pouring some on. We got four to go, and the Sens get one back. It's Jaden Schwartz. It ain't over yet. One minute to go, and the Sens tie it. It's Colin White. It's Colin. Dude. Why? Dude, come, uh, why is it? We have overtime coming up. If you bozos do not score, if you bozos allow. I'm just going to let it go. I'm not even going to look at the screen. I'm just going to let it go. I'm not even going to look at the screen. I'm just going to let it go. I'm just going to let it go. Is it at four? Okay, it's at eight times. Power play. For the, I, I'm not looking. I'm not looking. Okay, I think the game, I think, is the game over yet? Ah! Ross Cohen! Oh my goodness, Ross Cohen! Oh, he's coming through. He's got some of that Tampa playoff clutchness still in him. Now on to game four, first period, and it is tied going into the second. Zach Aston restarts the scoring, but Ruslan Turakov gets it done. The Sens are heavily out shooting us, though. This is not great. Period two. And Christian Dvorak, another big goal on Matt Murray. 11 minutes, 10 minutes to go now. Nine minutes to go. Power play. And Cole Caulfield. That's what we needed, baby. Cole Caulfield, 3-2. But it ain't over yet. Do not let Colin White and Alex Ovechkin. He puts it on, baby. And it is a bigger lead for your Montreal Canadiens. We're going on to game four. We've gotten two straight wins. We're up three to one. Come on, put it home in Montreal. In Montreal, put it home right now. Right now. <sighs> Who is that? You name, you let a guy named Call like C. Reinhardt score on you? He's totally from British Columbia. Oh my goodness. Period two. Please make it happen, okay? Okay, we're still down one. Greed gets on the board, but Cole Caulfield gets us within one. This is Matt Murray, guys. 
Colin Borrego from the point. Beautiful, darling. Ah. Oh. Oh, the curse of Dvorak comes right back. Kachuk and the Dvorak. Ten minutes to go. And Jaden Sturmall! Jaden Sturmall! Oh my goodness! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Oh, no, it's so much can the heavy net goal! And the Habs are back in round two. Who are we gonna face in round two? And it'll be the Florida Panthers, a rematch of last year's first round. I don't even need to look at that roster. We pretty much know what they got going on. It is a rematch of last year's first round. We're going to be in Florida for the first two games, but Montreal, if we can st if we can st if we can hammer them to start out this series like last year, that will give us a big advantage. Okay, period 1. Barkov and Denisenko. Okay. All right. Um period 2. Okay, Nick Suzuki and then Anton Liddell. Cole Caulfield, okay. We're in one now, power play. 13 minutes to go, come on. We still have some time, but not enough time. Not enough time. Less time than you think. Only seven, just go. Zane Wisdom. Zane Wisdom ties it all up in Sunrise. Unbelievable, and we are going to overtime. Oh, I can't, I can't look. I can't, I, I have to look though, I have to look. With my eyes wide open, and Cole Caulfield! Oh, Cole Caulfield! It's four to three! It's it's four to three win! Unbelievable, Cole Caulfield and Zane Wisdom heroics in Florida. Not for now, but game two is here, and uh, we have some business to take care of. Game two, come on, start off well. Don't be down behind in period two, and we're down behind in period two. All right, Sam Ryan, our power play goal. Get back on the board. Air neck blood power play goal. You know what? Just make this quick, boys. <gasps> Alex Ovechkin! Dude! Dude! Alex Ovechkin putting the team up! Ah. Come on. Don't let. All three goals were power. You know what? We're changing the penalty kill. This game. We're we're winning this next one, so it's all, all it's it's all right. But please, can we go to a second period for lead, Montreal? Can we please do this? Okay, we don't go into a second period down. At least there we have that when we are leading in shots. Second period, continue that momentum. Okay, we are tied. Sam Bennett gets on the board, but Cole Caulfield gets us tied again. Kim Vickland, the legendary, <laughs> the legend, and Barbashev gets us, gets us on top as well, and Cole Caulfield, power play goal, and a 5 on 3 and Luke Hughes as well, it's a bunch of, it's a, it's a bunch of bananas of scoring, 5-2, you love to see it, come on, hold that lead baby, yes sir, and we are now going still back to montreal for game four and with a two to one series lead i don't even know what i'm saying anymore i don't even know what i'm saying anymore okay let's go on the game let's go on to game four okay game four we can strangle them here kill them don't give them any mercy period one and we gave them mercy oh oh dear uh dvorak coleman then greenway don't give them any mercy montreal and we're still giving them mercy. Bart got me to 3 1. Baruzlan Durakov gets us within one. Come on, tie it all up about. I can't. I, please, Montreal, please. Do this for me. Do this for. I only have one. I have only have this season and the next left. Do it for me. I can only go five seasons. I've made that for myself. I Please. Please don't let us go back. Ah, oh, no. And we're going back 2 2 to Florida. This is not good. This is not good. We couldn't get that clutch goal that we needed. We couldn't get that clutch goal that we needed. And now we're going back to Florida. It is a 2-2 series. This is exactly where they want us. This is exactly where they want us. Come on, Montreal! Everybody at home, we need some luck in this first period. Come on. We need some prayers. We need some blessings. Okay. Still 0-0. Zero, zero. We need more blessings, boys. We need more blessings, boys and girls. <laughs> period 2. Max killed on. Uh, 
It's one zero. Havies, I need you. I need you. I want so bad skin. That is what you love to see. No, 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 no. Okay. No. We are calm. We are serene. We are calm. We are. We are calm. We are calm. We are calm. Three power plays. No. <sighs> Three power plays. And we couldn't score on them. This is it. This is it. This is the season right here. This is the season. 1-1. One, one. We had three power plays and we couldn't score on them. Unbelievable. Sam, Spencer Knight shutting down the door. We need a goal here. Oh! Alex Ovechkin! <laughs> Alex Ovechkin in overtime! And the Habs now have a three to two series lead. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Please win this game. Please win this game. Come on. Well, now it officially is the season. <laughs> what the, what? Part of my French. What the what the heck was that? Now we have Kurt Roloff though back in the lineup. We need to limit our go where our goal our, our goal our goals against here. I can't even speak anymore. Game seven. This is where all the marbles lie. All the marbles have ever been in this game seven. First period. You guys let out Kevin Shattenkirk score. <sighs> Wait. Okay. I was just letting the, the timer go down. It's six to four Florida. Now seven to four Florida. We lost game seven. I will see you next year. And that's it. I'll see you I'll see you next year for the next season. We're winning the Stanley Cup. Okay, we are officially here for year five. And if I don't win the Stanley Cup this year, this video ends. So I felt the need to make some big moves this offseason and uh I'm going to reveal them to you right now. So let's go through the four group first things first. First line stays the same of Ovechkin, Suzuki, and Cole Caulfield. The second line it goes Ruslan Turakov, Christian Dvorak, and Alex Iafalo. I traded Alex Iafalo for a second, third, and Warren Fogel from the LA Kings. And he's a pretty big upgrade over what Fogel was. He dropped down to an 83, and Iafalo was an 87. And last year, he was great for LA, getting 74 points in 82 games. So I think he can do the same for us and be big in the playoffs as well. In terms of the third line, we end up getting Jonas Donskoy in free agency, who was great too last year. Uh, getting 56 points in 82 games for the Canucks, but it's been a pretty consistent product over these past few seasons. I end up getting, uh, or Zade Wisdom is now going to fill in as the third line center, though I could have our recent acquisition of P.S. Suter as well at the, as a third line guy. But I think he's perfect for this team as a two-way center on that third line. Had a great year last year too at Detroit where he got 42 points in 63 games for them. And I think he's going to be great for us too. Kurt Roloff will be on the third line this year just for the pure fact that I think it just fits better. But uh, if there is an injury, then Roloff will be on the second line then we have the fourth line of Jesper Bratz who I also brought in as a free agent who I think in terms of a bottom six role could do very well for us Zade Wisdom and Arturi Lekanen and then we go on the defense where it's the only position where I didn't change anything so a little bit of a sneak peek for the next one but Jacob Jigren grew to a 92 overall one of the best defensemen in the league now Luke Hughes grew up to 88 Vicklin's up to an 88 Pareko's at 86 Lundell and Romanov are 82 a piece but then we go on to the goaltending which is the maybe the biggest change of the of the team this next year i am going after john gibson i knew i needed a true starter in nets i'm not sure sebastian Costa can quite be that but if we do have an injury he's 86 overall and can fill in quite nicely so we'll see you guys at the end of the season because this team i hope is going to be the team to win the stanley cup for us oh my goodness oh my gosh 
Okay, y'all. So we're still not great. 30, 26, and 5 around the trade deadline. I need a, a goaltender that can actually play the position of goalie. And uh, Vegas also has Brett Pesci, who is an 87 overall, and they want to get rid of him. And I think he could be a big part of this uh, of this team. So I'm going to make this trade. We're also going to get rid of Esalen Dell too, a player back just to make it work. A first rounder, a second rounder, and a third rounder. We'll see if this goes through, and it does. We'll hopefully make the playoffs. I'll give you guys an update as we go along. Toronto, big game, and we lose in overtime. Detroit, this is humongous, and we win. Okay, we do win this game. Now, Carolina. Carolina, we lose. Oh, my. No, dude. This is this is a travesty. We right now are two points behind a playoff spot. The Sens have the same amount of games as us. This is not good, dude. We have, three, we have five games to go. Five games to go. We need wins. Beat Toronto for the love of everything holy. Come on. Rob. Oh my gosh. What? This team is stacked. I literally have like an 84 on my fourth line. This, like, this. I don't know what to do, dude. I don't know what to do, guys. Seriously. Like, look at this team. What am I supposed to do differently? <laughs> what am I supposed to do differently? Please give me an answer. Anybody. I don't I really don't get it. I like I have an I have an 88 Vicklin on my on my on my on my on my third pair. I'll put him on the first, I guess. How is Leonard doing? How is Leonard doing? He's only played two games. Why is he only playing two games? Oh no, dude. Is Kosa really Kosa, why are you in here? Why are you in here? Get out. Bye. Bye. All right, we have a game against Tampa. If we don't win this, we're done. We are, we are, we are done. We are done. We are done if we don't win this game. Not even, not even a question in my mind. We are done if we, if we, if we don't win this game. All right. What am I supposed to do? Seriously, what am I supposed to do? I hate this. I hate. I why? I mean, thankfully, I'm not, I haven't purchased NHL 22 yet. I'm probably not going to. Because this is a hot steaming load of garbage. I this is honestly one of the best teams I've ever assembled. <laughs> this is honestly one of the best teams I've ever assembled. Okay, Vicklin. It's tied. Win this game. Okay. Cole Coft will put in the team on his back. How are we looking now? With uh two games to go. We are oh my gosh. We missed the playoffs. We missed the playoffs. Look at this. We missed the playoffs. What do the Senators have that we don't have? Great player, Brady Kachuk. Colin White became an 88. Okay. I guess that finally explains it. But they have not nowhere near the depth that we do. Their defense is so much worse than ours. And they got that. They got a 68! And he's doing better than Kosa! But that is it. <laughs> that is a unfortunate way to end the Montreal Canadiens rebuild. Hey, at least with Christian Dvorak, he did pretty well for us. And if we're if we're gonna just go by that, the Christian Dvorak Montreal Canadiens rebuild. Uh if he plays like if he plays like this in real life, then I think Cabs fans will be pretty happy. Uh during his time here, once he got traded in 2020, one, he got 63 points in 82 games and 75 and 81, 71 points in 71 games, 88 points in 82 games, and then right back down to 62 at 82. But honestly, really good time here in Montreal and a fantastic 2024 season. So uh for Christian Dvorak at least it's working out pretty well. Anyways. Sad end to this franchise mode, but at least Christian Dvorak did well, so we have that. If you guys enjoyed the craziness of this franchise mode, make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell if you haven't already. We tried to bring up a cup to Montreal, and unfortunately, the hockey gods just said no. Now, it's not a Canadian thing, because the Winnipeg Jets won the Stanley Cup right before this year. So, it's not, it's not a Canadian thing, it's just the Montreal, so... Uh, well, we'll, uh, we'll see if you guys enjoyed though this episode make sure you hit that like button subscribe and comment down below your thoughts on all the shenanigans today and uh, make sure you do hit that like button as well uh, if you want to see more episodes and more videos just like this more rebuilds like this 
did not go the way we planned and this was the kind of the first big nhl 21 video i made so if there was some mistakes and some editing stuff uh, that didn't quite work out i uh, just know that that is that is what happens uh, i i hope to get better in the next one and hopefully uh this does well we'll see what happens again chris dubark in montreal did pretty well but we couldn't bring the cup to Montreal because that's just pure A E A voodoo, man. Pure E E A E A voodoo. I can't believe it. I'll see you guys in the next one though. Have a great day and goodbye.